For the next few weeks, I'm going to be exploring the beautiful island nation of Sri Lanka in the very first electric tuk-tuk. Get in the back seat. This series will not only show you the sights and help you plan your next trip to Sri Lanka, but I'll also document all of the challenges of this pioneering adventure in the electric tuk-tuk. Oh no, it's giving up, it's giving up. Welcome back to Next Level Adventures and welcome to the electric odyssey in Sri Lanka. Enjoy and subscribe if you're new. Hello everyone, welcome to the beautiful island of Sri Lanka and what promises to be a proper next level adventure and something truly electrifying. <laughs> Over four years ago now, I had the pleasure of exploring this island nation in a tuk-tuk very similar to this one and we had an incredible time. However, this time things are going to be a little bit different. You see, you might not know this about me, but I have a permanent wrist injury. It's all broken and bolted together. And it means that it limits my ability to squeeze things, to hold weights and to twist my wrist, which are two very important abilities that you need in order to engage the clutch and twist and change gears in a typical tuk-tuk. But this ain't no typical tuk-tuk. <laughs> this is the second time that locals have opened up the engine. They're so curious. It's beautiful. Yes, really. You see, this is the first ever fully electric tuk-tuk available to rent right now on the island of Sri Lanka with the beautiful people at tuktukrental.com and they invited me to come to Sri Lanka, have a big adventure, test out their new electric engines and see if an adventure on this island in Sri Lanka is possible with an electric tuk-tuk. Obviously, I'll go into way more detail about this tuk-tuk and all of the challenges that we have to overcome in order for this massive adventure to become a success. But right now, as you can see, I'm leaving the big city of Nagumbo, which is right next to Colombo, the capital city, and I'm heading inland. We've got about 150 kilometers to go. And this range, as I'll explain in a second, the range of this thing is not quite 150 kilometers. Hello. <laughs> this is so much fun. So take your seat on the back seat, put your seatbelt on and relax and enjoy this adventure. Subscribe if you're new. And I'm gonna take you back to yesterday when I arrived and I got all my paperwork and I became legal here. And they showed me around this tuk-tuk because I think it's an important part of this adventure for you to understand the context of just how easy it is to rent a tuk-tuk. And then I'll see you in a minute back on the big road heading towards the mountains. <laughs> Woo! Enjoy. So, after landing and checking into my hotel, I walked over to the offices of Tuk Tuk Rental in Nagumbo, and I got my first look at the E Tuk Tuk. She is a fully converted tuk-tuk, which means they just took out the original combustion engine, ripped it out and took out the fuel tank and replaced everything with lithium batteries and the whole electric engine. I'll give you a quick tour of the tuk-tuk later because they quickly threw me in the deep end with a driving lesson. There's no brake here and there's no brake here. This is the gas acceleration. I mean, there would be no point in going over all of the paperwork and the route planning if I couldn't bloody drive the thing. <laughs> It's strange, there's no engine noise, obviously. It's electric. <laughs> Tuk Tuk Rental give you a proper driving lesson that can take over two hours or until they feel comfortable that you're driving safely on the roads. So this includes everything. They go over parking. I'm scared. <laughs> turning and most importantly, going over the main roads and learning how to negotiate Sri Lankan traffic, which can be a little bit terrifying, but it's a very important part of the lesson. Yeah, you weren't, you weren't joking. It's the turning circle is so good. This is fun and I'm quite relieved 
at how easy this is. All you need to rent a tuk-tuk, guys, is a driving license. And make sure to email them ahead of time, three or four days at least, so that they can go ahead and organize your local license, your local paperwork. Okay, the test was a success. They provide vehicle insurance, all of the support and guidance you could wish for, and then they have an entire team to help you plan out a route and you know things to see and do during your road trip. Also on this road, which is a flat road towards Candy. And so finally, after a few hours, and my lessons was finished, and I'd picked up my paperwork and my license, I was just let loose on the streets of Nagumbo to explore and to have my very first mini adventure in the electric tuk-tuk. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> I've got my license, I've got my paperwork, I've had my lesson, and I'm fully legal. And me and this electric tuk-tuk, which I'm yet to name, have been set wild here in Sri Lanka, and I'm so excited. I was just gonna go back to the hotel and relax, because I was up till silly o'clock in the morning watching the Champions League and then I flew here this morning, so I was a little bit tired, um, but there's no power in this part of Colombo. There's a power cut, so I can't even charge the tuk-tuk back to 100%, and this is a problem in Sri Lanka, um, power shortages and fuel shortages, and so just, just getting back from tuk-tuk rental, the locals who run the guest house, the hotel I'm staying at, were so interested by the tuk-tuk and they were poking their nose in and asking me all the questions, like how far can it go on one charge? Uh, they're telling me around 100, 150, oh. but in the mountain area, about 80. Oh, okay. They started asking me like, okay, where can we get hours converted? And I was like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> so yes, with the power cut back at the hotel, I just decided it was best to set off and gain some XP on the tuk-tuk and head to a nearby beach. And because I had the tuk-tuk, it wasn't long until I found a cool local spot with people enjoying this beautiful afternoon. Local fishing spot. This little beach looks out to Colombo, down south and out towards the deep Indian Ocean. And even though this little drive was nothing really compared to what's in store for tomorrow, it was just exactly what I needed to, you know, get grounded and feel like I'd finally arrived and that the adventure was properly underway. You've got the fishing boats out there and there's an incredible sky and sunshine rays coming through the clouds in the distance and we've got locals playing cricket on the beach here. It's in the afternoon now, it's like coming up to half past five and I've seen lots of locals fishing on the sides of bridges, going through little villages on the outskirts of the city. And I'm just, I'm just so excited and I'm so happy to be here. Super excited to share with you the adventures. Sit down, relax, enjoy this series. It's only just beginning and yeah, I'll see you tomorrow morning when the real adventure starts. Okay, welcome back and welcome to, what is it now? Seven o'clock in the morning. We're leaving nice and early because I have a bit of an ambitious plan. So with the range of this tuk-tuk, which I still haven't figured out a name for her, bless her. The range is, according to the actual little iPad on the front, apparently I have 147 kilometers of range. Now I have to go 150, so we're obviously gonna have to stop and recharge at some position somewhere along the way. So I've saved a little location, a little town halfway, where I think it would be cool to grab some lunch, whack the tuk-tuk on charge for an hour, and then that should be able to give us enough juice to limp into Sigaria. I've got a special plan for the afternoon, and I'll tell you about that if we make it. I've booked no accommodation, I've booked no activities, everything on this trip is gonna be spare of the moment, last minute type of thing, because I don't know if the tuk-tuk's gonna make it. So let's begin. 
by getting the hell out of Dodge and heading towards the countryside and away from all this traffic. And this isn't even the scary road. I've got to get on the scary road now. I've got my GPS, I've got my Bluetooth speaker, I've got my GoPro set up, I've got my backpack in the back, cheeky little banana on the back seat. We'll get some water. We've got our local license, we've got everything, we've got our insurance, we are happy days. So let's go. Over the past few years, I've been lucky enough to explore some gorgeous countries all around the world, either on foot, using public transport, or most frequently on the back of a motorcycle. But there's just something so unique about driving a tuk-tuk around Sri Lanka that I have to say that this was one of the most incredible feelings I've ever had. Because not only do you have that incredible sense of freedom that comes with this style of travel, but you also have protection against the elements sitting on the front seat of the tuk-tuk. You have all of the locals waving and cheering you on as you drive on by. And with the electric engine, you can enjoy much more peace and quiet as you drive through. So happily sat at the front with a big smile on my face. I had my little speaker and I had my tunes just playing in front of me, not too loudly. I didn't have to come bat against a noisy engine, just the odd truck or tractor or bus driving past. And I was in my absolute element, leaving the city and heading into the more beautiful, the more stunning rural areas of the country. And after a few hours, I was approaching the halfway mark and it was time for me to not only stop for a little spot of local lunch, but to also top up the charge of the battery to have enough juice in the tank to make it to Sigaria. However, <laughs> as I'll explain right now, things weren't exactly panning out as I had hoped. If you're coming to Sri Lanka, by the way, or traveling anywhere abroad this year, you're going to need a VPN to stay secure and safe online. And I have a great deal for you guys today, thanks to the VPN provider that I've been using for the past two years and the sponsor of this video, NordVPN. There are loads of benefits using a VPN, especially when you're traveling, but the two main ones that I use are protection online and enabling the fact that you can get full access to your normal library of content on streaming services that I enjoy during your downtime every evening when you're out on your travels. Just with one quick click and your IP address is encrypted and your identity is protected. There's no chance of hackers that use public Wi-Fis at coffee shops and other hotels and hostels, for example. With NordVPN, you're safe, you're secure. And just knowing that you can surf the web in peace and get access to your normal content you enjoy at home, all of that just helps the traveling experience become much better. So what's the deal? Well anyone who uses the link in the description and buys a two-year plan gets four bonus months on top. So no matter how much you're traveling in the next few years this plan has got you covered and you'll be able to surf the web with full access and in a secure fashion. Make sure you click that link in the description to get that exclusive deal that NordVPN have kindly given the viewers of this channel. Okay. <laughs> This is going to be, this is going to be very, very challenging, I can tell, because the charging and the battery is, it's going to be a process. So I got to this town that was the halfway point, and I was hoping that I would still have around 60%, but I'm down to 35% battery. So I went to this hotel next to the lake, but when I got there, they just weren't having it. The, the guest house next door, which had plugs on the outside of the building, they just said it didn't have any power supply. And then I was asking if I could sit down and have a meal and charge it um, into the mains at the plugs that they have everywhere. And they said no. And I was like, okay, never mind, never mind. So I didn't have lunch there. I drove around town a little bit more. I tried two more places. But what I'm finding is I can find, I can find people that want to help me, restauranteurs. I went into this one restaurant and um, they were so happy for me to charge, but they couldn't find the plug. That was convenient. The only plug that they had was right next to the till and it was just, the cable was gonna get in the way. Um, and the other situation is, the plug, which is like a British plug, and you see these plugs here in Sri Lanka, but m not often, most of the plugs are, or a circular version, which I don't have that plug for. I don't have that plug. And so I don't know what to do. So I've pulled up to another rice and curry shop 
and the man here is very helpful and he told me to go across to his pet shop where they're selling birds and fish and we spoke to the owner and I showed them the letter that Tuk Tuk gave me to explain how to charge it and how much it costs. That was the main issue, like they were, they were trying to figure out, they said that we don't know how much to charge you and I said it's all written down here, it's very cheap and, and I'll, I'll pay more than what you want. So he let me park up, we've plugged it into the side of the wall and I'll have to let it charge to at least, at least 80%. But in the meantime, I'm gonna eat some food. It's been about 35 minutes. It's on 43%. So that's going to take... It's still saying 3 hours until 80% charge. The local guy, he's called Nisal. He's the guy who's been really trying to help me. And because I didn't have the right plug, he also helped me buy this, which is an adapter for English to Sri Lankan. In Colombo and in the big city, they've converted to that type of plug, but apparently, and again, remember, I'm the guinea pig for this, uh, they didn't realize that people out here in the provinces are still using the old school plug, the circular one. There is fast charging cables coming to this tuk-tuk, but not yet. The L1 chargers, unfortunately, didn't get shipped to Sri Lanka in time for my trip. So this will be an improvement. This is a process that over time, more charging stations will pop up and faster cables will arrive. But for right now, we're here at the pet shop. <laughs> I only really managed to charge here for about 45 minutes or so because I could tell that this charging location just wasn't very convenient for the shop owner. So I just decided to keep moving, keep looking for a better spot. But as I left and I started driving looking for a new charging location, I started to see some strange readings on the dashboard. Okay, this is very strange. It's telling me that my estimated range is 255 kilometers. That's not anywhere near possible so something's something's going wrong because that is a strange reading this is the gas station let me speak to the guys let's see if this works please speak english oh it's uh electric it electric 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 do you have a a plug do you have a, a plug? A plug for electric charge? Huh? I have the charger. Um, <laughs> look, look, look. Here. You see? Charge it. Yeah. You, you want to charge it? Uh, device? Charge my tuk tuk. Where, where is it? Over there? Okay, okay. Okay, they seem helpful. This is good. Yeah, it's a, it's a oh, I just broke my sunglasses. I just broke my sunglasses. Only 50 baht from Koh Sun Road, but still. Um, yeah, it's electric tuk-tuk. <laughs> I'm all over the place. Breaking my sunglasses, driving with the handbrake on. So this goes in here. Okay. And we're in business. Okay, charging. And it's saying... Okay, the hours until... Okay, it's coming down to 2 hours 37 minutes. Two hours and seven minutes. <laughs> oh my god. Jeez. Oh, I'll text Tuk Tuk Rental and I'll tell them that this is the situation. We're gonna be here for two hours and 35 minutes. Okay, so this whole charging and battery life situation, it is coming across like a huge fuss and this might potentially put you off the e tuk, -tuk concept. But please remember, I'm the very first person to try out this e tuk, -tuk in Sri Lanka. So these teething problems were always going to happen I also think it's probably a good time to just give you a quick tour of the tuk-tuk whilst I'm waiting here. So 
This would be where the engine is on a normal tuk-tuk, but they've just taken out the engine, taken out the oil tank, the fuel tank, and replaced it with lithium batteries. Actually, when you have a full tank of petrol, this tuk-tuk is still heavier than a normal tuk-tuk because of the batteries. The batteries are super heavy. Obviously, it's a three-wheeler, so two at the back, one wheel at the front. The tuk-tuks come with these really nice, strong material, so very difficult to tear, and obviously, when it starts to rain, these pull down and cover both doors, which is good for security, but also keeps you dry when the rains come down. And you've got two mirrors, windscreen wipers, and high beams and lights and indicators so it's very much like a car in that sense and then in the cabin you've got the back seat which you can comfortably fit two people and a room for your bags again enough for about two or three people if you had a little bit of luggage and then at the front you've got a single seat the seat actually lifts up like this and in here you've got your battery to charge your USB they give you this uh, extension cord for plugging into the wall or into a shop. This is 20 meters. And you've got brake fluid, a foot brake. For the electric, it's twist and go. All the buttons for your usual things. Phone holder. You can have another phone holder here if you want. And the speedo is obviously on the dashboard on this little monitor, which is showing us the charging. Oh, we've just hit 50%. When you park up at a lunch spot or a place to explore, like a, like a temple, on a hill, maybe do a little trek, then this actually doesn't become too annoying. You can find a place to charge, park up, go explore, have a lunch, have a couple of hours, and then you get back on the tuk-tuk. It's just because this is day one of the drive, and um, I just kept driving and driving and driving until I got to the halfway point. I should have, in retrospect, I should have planned my journey to get to around about the 50%, 60% charge remaining, or, or maybe 40% remaining, and then make sure that I was near something that I could go explore. And not only make content for you and show you some cool part of Sri Lanka, but actually give myself that opportunity to charge whilst having lunch and exploring. So that's a mistake I made here on day one. Um, but it, like I said, this is, a, this, is a, this is the teething stage. I'm fine, thank you. <laughs> bye bye. There's the school bus. Bye bye. Okay, so I've been here for an hour and a half and it's charged to 70%, which according to my half a day's experience, I've got enough charge to comfortably make it, comfortably make it. I should have at least 15% left to get to my hotel, which is right near to where I need to be. So I'll be able to park at the hotel, check in, put it on charge for an hour, maybe maybe two hours, and still make it to the place that I need to be and where I want to end the first episode. I do need to go speak to the bloke and see how much money I owe. Are you sure? Excuse me. Okay. I tried to give him 500, he was having none of it. I said, how much? He said, no, 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 it's fine. So I said, okay, well, that's very kind of you. Let me give you 500 tip. And he wouldn't accept it. So at least it was free. I'm not expecting that every time. He's obviously very confused and just wants to help me out. The big oil companies didn't get our money, which is good. Because that's kind of the whole point of going electric, isn't it? So with enough charge to comfortably make it, I left the gas station behind and continued north and enjoyed another hour or two of bliss Sri Lankan countryside. Eventually, I arrived at my hotel in Sigiriya, and as usual, the locals were very interested and keen to learn about the tuk-tuk. Okay, success. We, we made it. We made it to where I need to be. And I came in on the tuk-tuk and he was like, what happened to your tuk-tuk? He thought I'd broken down. <laughs> and I said, no, it's electric. This charger is basic charger, but next month they're gonna have fast charger. Oh, okay, I understand. Okay. I understand. Yeah. 
And after a pot of tea and settling into my room where I was able to not only relax, but also to charge the tuk-tuk directly into the mains of the hotel. And at around 4 p.m., just in time as a huge storm started to gather around me, <laughs> I decided to head over to a very important and famous little peak here in Siguria that I wanted to share with you because it's one of the most beautiful places on the island. And with this big storm gathering around me, I was hoping and praying that there wouldn't be any more drama, that I could take you up here and we could finish off this episode in style. Wish me luck. <laughs> Let me tell you the story of why I've come here. I want this trip to be about new perspectives and about new angles. So the last time I came to Sri Lanka, as I mentioned at the beginning of this episode, I came with the budgeteers, Thais, Lena, and I. And I couldn't drive the tuk-tuk, um, as I mentioned, with my wrist, and I didn't have a license either. So it definitely wasn't happening. So I sat in the back, and throughout the entire journey of Sri Lanka, I didn't get that visceral experience of driving it and navigating the roads and the traffic and that feeling that you get. In the back seat, as fun as it was, I was a passenger on that trip. And the second reason I've come here is because when we were here with the budgeteers, we split up because that is a World Heritage UNESCO site called Lion's Rock and it's a beautiful place, very historical, but it's very expensive. It's around 25 US dollars or it was when we went and we couldn't justify spending three tickets. So what we did is we split up and I went to Lion's Rock. I paid the entrance and I climbed up the stairs and I saw the lion's prints the lion paws at the front etched in the stone and I learnt all about the rocks and I learnt all about the history and it was fantastic and it was a great experience and then Thais and Lena, they came here to this temple lookout. They came here to look upon Lion's Rock and, a, and watch sunset and they got a completely different experience to me and so I've always wanted to come here and do what they did and get this experience. Their only complaint, other than the fact it was beautiful, which it is, is the fact that it was absolutely rammed full of people. But there's only a handful of people here today, so I don't know if the storm has scared people away, I don't know if Sri Lanka is just not as busy as it once was. But for whatever reason, it's very peaceful up here. There's only a few people taking beautiful pictures, which I will do too. And I'll end with a few shots of the Lion's Rock itself and the last few moments of sunset. Thank you so much for watching episode one. If you're brand new, welcome. I go on adventures all year as often as I can. This is a pretty epic one. So subscribe for not just the rest of this series, but we're going to uh, Argentina, Chile and Antarctica before the Christmas, New Year's. Loads of adventures on this channel. And if you're a regular here, it's good to have you back. And it's good to get this feeling once again. I'll see you in episode two next week. <laughs>